To my left, road crews and state troopers are continuing to pick up the debris from a wreck. The line is wrapped all the way around the old Montgomery Mall to about a mile up McGee Road. And unfortunately, many people that's in the line won't be able to receive the vaccine today because there is a limited supply. <laughs> Many are describing this marathon as the reopening of downtown Montgomery. Collegiate athletes could make profit from their play if a bill is passed right here at the State House. The gates here at Veterans Memorial Stadium locked this week. Fathers helping fathers say this is not a one off event, but they're going to do events like this every first Sunday in a city park in Montgomery. Courtney Chandler, WSFA. 12 news. As the rain continues to come down, it didn't stop the Juneteenth celebrations from happening in Montgomery. When we think about going to a farm, we normally think about going to the country. Well, imagine coming to one in your own backyard. If you come down Mobile Highway just off of I-65 here in Montgomery, you're going to be greeted by beer cans, candy wrappers, and other trash. The ordinance is defeated. I like the majority. A cry of disappointment from some Montgomery citizens as Mayor Reed's proposed non-discrimination ordinance failed to get approval from the city council. The ordinance would have protected the rights of all people in Montgomery from discrimination by the city. It would have covered all sorts of categories from age, race, and national origin to sexual orientation and gender identity. The proposal also would have created a 10-member Human Rights Commission promoting principles of diversity, inclusion, and harmony through the city. Mayor Reese says he's concerned about the message the city council sent by voting the measure down. If I am asked, are we as a city committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion of all people, then I have questions about that. And if I have questions on it, I cannot support it. Reed says he'll be forced to recommend that businesses who have those values go to other cities. The ordinance was unveiled weeks ago, but one of the council members who voted against it said she still had unanswered questions and felt bullied into making a decision. You need to be clear conscious because I have to answer to the people in my district about every decision I make and I want to be able to give a good answer. Because if it's all inclusive, I just don't see the rally of the people that it's including. This is the first time in my lifetime it come through here. James Fisher and his family immediately went to their storm shelter for protection. But even while inside, they felt the impact from the storm. And you could see that steel door, that wind was trying to pull it off. Thankfully, they were able to make it out safely. But what they saw was an unpleasant picture. Scatters of debris and little was left of their family home. In all, 13 homes in Perry County were destroyed. 12 were left with significant damage, along with three churches. Damage uh, estimated is, is, is probably close to the millions when uh, you think of what people have lost. Many of the people say they're committed to rebuild. And they said that the community working together and the support from other areas here in the state will help speed up that process. We've had uh, so many volunteers coming and giving clothes and food and money and uh, pastors, churches calling us. Residents say the support from other communities and organizations gives them hope in the midst of tragedy. After all this is over, it's going to be a great story and great testimony to the grace of God. And Motivation to come back bigger and stronger. Three cleanups were done earlier this year to clean areas in District 4, but they didn't stay clean long. And two weeks later, this is what we find all over again. These people see this, this is their vision of Montgomery. If you come down Mobile Highway just off of I-65 here in Montgomery, you're going to be greeted by beer cans, candy wrappers, and other trash, making this area a an eyesore here in Montgomery. And the city doesn't have the manpower to keep every area clean. Councilwoman Graham says it's time for a new solution, and it's called Queen a Half, Bring a Smile with five people being selected within District 4 to keep a half a mile clean. When they do that, we'll be given a stipend of $50 a week, $200 a month to them. The stipend will come from District 4 funding, and the initiative will start on September 5th and last for six months, with the goal being that this cleanup will move into communities within the district. 
the COVID has kind of slowed us down, but hopefully they'll get back energetic, they'll get back revived, they'll want to beautify the interests of the community. And we don't want them to have a vision of a clean uh, Montgomery, Alabama. So my vision is to have this stuff clean and hopefully we can keep it clean. Around eight years ago, a friend of mine gave me some chickens from a local farm store and we had them as pets for a while and then we decided to get a rooster and start raising them and ever since then it's taken off from there. Carlos now manages between 200 to 300 birds with everything from ducks, peacocks, and of course, <laughs> chickens calling his backyard their home. We never thought, or I never thought it would get this big, but I guess fate just gave me the right components to become a big farm. <laughs> Many of the birds he has at his farm he found on Facebook, and each year he adds five to 20 new species. But what does he do with so many birds? We have some here for breeding stock, and then we sell babies and eggs in the spring and summertime. And Carlos is only 15, and he has a few words of advice to any young person who wishes to follow in his footsteps. Never give up and never let your dreams be confined to one place. His goal is to one day be a veterinarian or manage a zoo and he hopes his business, Brown's Birds, is putting him on the right track to make those goals become a reality. In Montgomery, <laughs> Courtney Chandler, WSFA 12 News.